All right, okay, and welcome to today's uh, PlayStation 4 video. And today we're going to look at a slightly different um, fault to the ones that we have been looking at so far. Uh, in so much as today we're going to be looking at the white light of death as opposed to the blue light of death. Um, and this particular machine here uh, is showing those symptoms. So how many times, and we'll have a quick straw poll here, how many times have you turned your beloved PlayStation 4 on to find this? And you can see the blue light blinking away there. There's no signal on the TV. And we've still got a blue light, still got no signal. Still got no signal, still got a blue light. And we've got a white light, and we've got a white light, no signal. <laughs> so, how many times have you sort of gone around the back of the TV thinking, oh, okay, wiggle the wires about, wiggle the wires about in the back, and still got nothing out of it? Well, this is a very interesting issue, and it's one that blights quite a percentage of PlayStations, to be honest with you. Um, back on the original launch, this issue um, was fairly well known, um, and continues to be a problem even to this day. And we're going to go through a few reasons as to why that is. So, first things to do is if you find that and you check the HDMI cable and it tests out completely fine, uh, and you maybe try a different HDMI cable and it still does this, um, then just watch this. Because we're going to shut the machine down, and we are going to put the PlayStation 4 into something called safe mode. Now what safe mode does is rather than booting directly into the OS, you know, with a lovely blue menu and, you know, the thing that we're usually used to seeing, uh, safe mode is basically a list of uh, diagnostic options, if you like. Um, and it's like a, it's a fail safe mode if you like. If the PlayStation fails to boot it should go into safe mode. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're going to shut this down. As you can see the white light's pulsing there, so it's preparing to shut down. And we're going to yellow light. Because for all intents and purposes of course, this machine is actually working. We just can't see any output on the display. And we're going to go through why that is. Now, I know it's naughty the fact that I shouldn't really be doing this, i.e. pulling the lead out while it's in the yellow light state because you can cope data but to be honest I think this PlayStation is a little bit beyond that at the moment that's the least of its worries it's cooked to data so slide the cover off just caught the power button there in my hand <laughs> so I'm just going to pop the screw out and I'm going to slide the hard disk out I'm going to pop the power lead back in and basically what should happen now is the PlayStation should seek to find the hard disk because of course once the boot is passed from flash uh, it should go to the hard disk to load the OS. Without the hard disk there it should try and detect the hard disk, realise it's not there and reboot into safe mode and we should get at least something on that display. So let's just uh, hit the power button and see what we get. We've got a blue light again. And at this point our PlayStation should be realising that there isn't a lot going on as far as the hard disk goes. And we should get another click there, which we do, and it should now reboot again. You'll notice we've actually stopped getting a no signal message on the monitor. And we have got a white light. We've just got no output to the display. So why is that? Well, if you wiggle the lead, sometimes you may find that you'll get an image. Other times you won't. Um, so for all intents and purposes there, we know that our PlayStation is actually behaving itself and is doing internally what it should do. But we're just not seeing the result of that on the display. And if we look and confirm our monitor, has power. And it's actually going into standby. That's <laughs> but either way, we've still got no signal. So that's not really helping us, is it? 
So I just unplug that and put it back in. I've turned it off now. We'll reboot it again. Um, again with the hard disk still out. Just to prove a point there. Seeing as the monitor went into standby. Trying to mess with my videos. This monitor of course has proven itself to be troublesome on more than one of these videos of mine so far so which is weird because I do have two of these uh, and the other one behaves impeccably well but this one <laughs> seems to have a mind of its own but uh, that's completely another story but as you can see you still have no signal so uh, but the PlayStation is doing what we would expect it to do it does try and boot it does click and reboot again and for all and purposes now that is sat in safe mode we just can't see it so what can we do for that? Well, what we'll do is we will shut this down properly and we will have a look and see just what is causing our issue because there are a couple of things that we're going to need to check out on this PlayStation and um, we're going to do that now. So uh, if you bear with me, uh, I'll get you off the tripod and we can have a closer look. Right, okay, so we've got you off the tripod, um, so you have to bear with me a moment because I've got the uh, camera in my hand here. Um, and this is just because it's going to be easy to show you um, rather than having it set up on the tripod. And if we look at the rear of our PlayStation, and this isn't true for every case, but for quite a few of these white light of death cases, this is going to be your issue. So what you're interested in is the HDMI port, and if you look at the bottom side, you will notice that we do have a set of copper goldy coloured contacts there. And all the ones on the bottom, as you can see, are fairly straight and where they should be. I'm just having a look at that one second in from the left actually because it does look to be a little bit broken. Uh, you can sort of see that, you can see the ends of the contacts, but the one second in from the right does appear to be missing. Um, and it is there, but it's... As you can see, it is there, but it, uh, it is partially broken off at the end. But the interesting bit is on the top. and uh, It's on the top set of pins. And I'll try and get out of the light for you. But you can see there's a set of teeth, uh, set of um, contacts there, but the right-hand side of this is looking rather, rather sad and sorry for itself. You can see there's two pins very close together. There should be another couple of pins either side of those two. Those are missing. So what we've actually got here is a HDMI port issue. And in turn of that, that might have caused other issues on our board. Uh, because there are um, power requirements of HDMI. There are 5 volt signals passing through there. Um, and if those uh, pins uh, touch that are carrying that to earth, what it can actually do is blow a little IC on our motherboard as well. So what we can do is we can replace the HDMI port on this PS4, and I do have spares. Um, and what we will do then is we will fire this up and see what we get. Now if we're lucky we'll get a nice solid picture. If we're not, we might still get no picture or a nice snowy artifacty picture or one that looks slightly odd. Um, or a picture with no audio for example, and that is caused by a blown uh, Panasonic uh, HDMI controller IC chip so if you bear with me guys we will disassemble this PlayStation we'll get it uh, up on the table and uh, we'll get to work and we'll see if we can uh, restore the the AV performance of this PlayStation 4 and uh, get it back to full health okay so I've taken a pair of tweezers and just straightened the pin out um, that was bent on the right hand side of that um, HDMI port and you can see now we do get a picture um, which is rather nice uh, however, we do still have a bit of a problem, and if you look at this, <laughs> uh, it may not become apparently clear there, but I'm just going to zoom in on the screen here, and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better about what I mean. And not only is it flashing on and off, but you'll notice there we've got some rather interesting um, sort of different coloured artefacts, and we've got... AV dropout and ooh, doesn't it look lovely that? <laughs> yeah, so this is what I'm saying. So basically we've just taken a pair of tweezers and straightened out that 
bent pin on the top uh, right hand side of the uh, HDMI port as we've just been looking at it and that has been enough to get a, a picture. Um, the console booted down into safe mode which of course uh, is your usual 480i resolution um, which the monitor displayed quite happily. Um, well it checked the system storage over and then once it's rebooted it has of course uh, negotiated with the display to find its 1080p uh, and then adjusted the resolution accordingly and now we're getting all these lovely uh, red snowy artifacts so it's good to know that like I said internally our machine is working um, but it's the port that is buggered and causing our issues now the red snowy artifact bit um, could be down to one or two reasons it could be the fact that we have a couple of broken pins in there uh, that either aren't making sufficient contact or making contact at all which is throwing um, the signal uh, to the monitor from the PlayStation out which is causing loss of information which is why we get the red artifact in alternatively um, what this can be uh, and what the issue will also be if you look at your HDMI port and it is fully intact and there, there is no problem there uh, is the Panasonic IC which controls the output through your HDMI port may be faulty if you're really unlucky you'll have both um, which is an issue um, so you'll need to replace both in that instance uh, now some more often than not you will get away with just replacing the HDMI port other times like I say you will replace the HDMI port uh, and you'll get a lovely picture uh, but you won't get much of anything else um, so what we're going to do is we are going to shut this down now we're going to get the board out and we're going to have a look uh, at replacing that HDMI port uh, and we'll reassemble well we'll partially reassemble we'll test and we'll see if that cures our issue if not uh, we will go and we will have a look at the Panasonic HDMI IC uh, and replace that if necessary so if you bear with me a moment guys I will find the screwdrivers and we will crack them out and uh, we can get to work what we've done is we have replaced that port um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to give each pin at the back of there the pin waggle test just to make sure it doesn't move uh, and then uh, all being well we'll put this back together and see if it works okay so we've got our PS4 uh, partially reassembled after uh, replacing that HDMI port <coughs> and we are just going to have a quick look now and see if it fires up so we're going to turn our monitor on uh, hit the button as you can see we've got the blue light pulsing away there PlayStation logo Uh, we have the white light there now, and if we just have a look at the monitor, hopefully, you'll be able to see. Now, if you can see some flickering there, that is actually the camera picking up the refresh rate on the monitor rather than an issue with the actual picture. But as you can see there now, there's very little in the way of artifacts or anything like that now you see there's no red flickering dots or anything like that on there and everything looks really rather nice and and clean and shiny as as you would have expected it to have done previously so it would appear that in our case here then that a simple HDMI port replacement has done the trick and um, for the white light of death in the majority of cases to be honest that is enough for you um, you know you don't really tend to have to worry about doing too much uh, more than that uh, as I say if you do get unlucky um, you may have to replace the um, the Panasonic uh, MN86417A chip which is uh, at the bottom of this motherboard um, but to be honest like I say that's um, that's not a particularly uh, common occurrence by any stretch of the imagination but if you are unlucky enough to uh, to go on the uh, the ground and plus five volt EDID um, pins together, you can blow it, and you know it is it is a known thing to to do. So, um, like I said, I've replaced a couple of those um, before now, but uh, luckily in this instance uh, that wasn't required. So what we'll do is we'll call this a success. Thanks for watching, boys and girls, and I will see you on the next vid. Uh, I do have a couple that I'm working on at the moment. 
Um, so hopefully I'll have some more content to uh, to bring to you this time next week. Um, I have got uh, one coming in um, for uh, a rebuild of its HDMI circuit. So the video we had, which we showed, uh, the pinout for the um, alternative pinout for the HDMI. I'm going to prove to you that that works. Um, using uh, using this one that's coming in and we will see you as I say hopefully with uh, some more content uh, a bit later this week so uh, thanks for watching uh, like I say continue to uh, comment rate subscribe uh, to this channel it's very much appreciated uh, and it makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile so uh, thanks a lot once again and uh, I'll see you in the next vid bye bye